want you to listen closely. Satan was let loose so that sin and death could finally be destroyed. Satan was let loose so sin and death could finally be destroyed. Satan was let loose so that sin and death could finally be destroyed. Think about what he's saying there. It's, he's implying that it's because of Satan that sin and death is finally destroyed. Now, what he's referring to is Revelation chapter 20 when Satan is let loose for a little season. Now, you'll notice if you actually read Revelation 20, it does not imply that sin and death is finally destroyed because of Satan. Let's see. It does say the devil was cast into the lake and fire, lake of fire, where the beast and false prophet are. All right. It does say that the unsaved are destroyed by fire. All right. But it does not say sin and death are finally destroyed. Just I want to make that clarification because he repeated himself. Sin and death could finally be destroyed. Satan was less loose, let loose so sin and death could finally be destroyed. That's not in Revelation 20. I just want to make that point. Alright? I think it's important. Because he's implying something that's not actually there. And then he's going to twist the word of God. Now you might say, weren't they destroyed at the cross? Isn't that what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15? Yes, Paul did write that. Write that. Well, in. Hold on a sec now. Paul did not write that. He's going to read 1 Corinthians 15. But I'm going to read it for you. Okay? And yeah, I know you've read this before. But think about what he said here. You might say, weren't they destroyed, sin and death, at the cross? Isn't that what Paul wrote in 1 Corinthians 15? Yes, Paul did write that. No, Paul did not write that. What did Paul write? Paul wrote, Behold, I show you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we shall all be changed. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump. For the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible, and we shall be changed. For this corruptible must put on incorruption, this mortal put on immortality. So when this corruptible shall put on incorruption, this mortal shall put on immortality, then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written death is swallowed up in victory O death where is thy sting O grave where is thy victory the sting of death is sin and the strength of sin is the law but thanks be to God which gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ okay so this is he's not talking about the cross He's talking about at the last trump, right? For the trumpet shall sound, the last trump. So when is the last trump? What's well, at the end of the world? All right, and Jesus was asked specifically 
this question about the end of the world. And when is the end of the world? It is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. What happens when he comes in the clouds of heaven? The angels gather together his elect. This is when, this is at the last trump. For he shall send his angels with the great sound of a trumpet. And they shall gather together his elect. That's the end of this world. <laughs> okay, you can't get around that. I mean, you, I don't know how you don't see it, honestly. Do not understand how you can not see the very plain scripture. But again, Paul doesn't write that this is talking about the cross when Jesus died on the cross and was three days in the belly of hell and then rose from the dead and then ascended, ultimately ascended to heaven where he is now preparing a place for us so that when he returns he will gather us with him. All right. <laughs> this is consistent all throughout the Bible. Consistently. All right. Think about this. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with the shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. So shall we ever be with the Lord. These three teachings in the Bible, 1 Corinthians 15, 1 Thessalonians 4, Matthew 24, they're all the same thing. They're all consistent. They're all talking about the same moment in time when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. And when he comes, it's the end of the world. Consider first, I'm sorry, Revelation 1, 1 Revelation 1. Right here in uh, verse 7, Behold, he cometh with clouds, and every eye shall see him, and they also which pierced him, and all kindreds of the earth shall well, because of him even so. Amen. Consistent in the same thing. Same thing in Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 21. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, they shall gather together his elect. Same thing. Same thing. Same thing. All right. Uh, consider this. Uh, and all the earth shall well because of him, even so. Amen. And then shall all the tribes of the earth mourn when they shall see Jesus coming in the clouds of heaven with power in great glory. Same thing. Now, consider this. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, what happens? We are caught up together. We are changed in a moment, in the twinkling of an eye. We shall put on incorruption, and we shall put on immortality, and then we'll be brought to pass the saying that is written, death is swallowed up in victory. All right, that's it. All right, that's it. Now what this guy is going to try to do is confuse people who are listening to him because he himself is extremely confused. He's basing his thoughts on what man has said, and he's reading the Word of God and ignoring the written Word of God. It's a phenomenon, I think, but it happens so often that I think it gets unnoticed. So I want to shine some light on this. Okay. Now, why 
why is this guy and so many other people blind to the, what's the obvious written word of God? And <laughs> I know a, a lot of people don't get this. But just, I'm going to keep repeating it. Knowing this first, that there shall come in the last days mockers, scoffers, walking after their own lust. This is why they're blind. What this guy is teaching, if he's being honest, is that Jesus is going to come in the clouds of heaven and he's going to be like a young man and he's going to be able to have sex like a young man with all the young women that he wants. All right, that's if he's being honest, that's what he's putting his hope into, and that's why he's teaching this, and so and everybody else that teaches this. All right, now I'm telling you, that's exactly why. Consider this. Just consider it. Now, if you don't want to hear it, maybe you're one of them, right? But if you want to know the truth. It's all right here in the Bible. How that they told you there should be mockers in the last time who should walk after their own ungodly lust. All right? Now consider this. You can't tell me this is not what he's teaching. This is exactly what he's teaching. All right, so hold on a second. Let me find it here. The kingdom where Christians, but what do parents, Christian parents, wait a second, hand down to their babies when they're born? Yes, well, yeah, hold on a second. Maybe I got the wrong one here. Right there. Right there it is. Okay. Let me read this. Here, now I better just let him. Every child born is born with a sin nature. So each baby born during that thousand year reign. Alright, so in the context of what he's saying, the thousand year reign comes after Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. In the context of what he's saying is that there will be children born after Jesus comes comes in the clouds of heaven. Alright, and so he's making a mockery of Jesus Christ. He's saying that Jesus doesn't actually put an end to death when he comes, even though that's what clearly what the Bible says. He's making a mockery out of the written word of God because he is fueled by his own lust. Now consider 1 John chapter 2. For all that is in the world the lust of the flesh, the lust of the eyes, and the pride of life is not of the Father, but is of the world. And the world passes away and the lust thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it's the end of the world. The world passes away and the lust thereof. The world passes away and the lust thereof. Consider this. Now when Jesus says in the resurrection, they neither marry nor are given in marriage, but are as the angels of heaven. All right, let's do it this way. They which shall be accounted worthy to obtain that world, the world of everlasting life where we are incorruptible and immortal. And the resurrection from the dead neither marry 
nor are given in marriage. In the resurrection. All right, in the resurrection. That's When is the resurrection? It's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. When is the resurrection? What does it say in 1 Thessalonians 4? First the dead in Christ shall rise, then we which are alive and remain. That's the resurrection. We are resurrected from the grave and caught up together, lifted up into the air to be with the Lord. That's the resurrection. All right, that's when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. We are lifted up, and then our enemy is gathered at our feet, and Jesus stomps his foot on the head of the serpent, destroying death forever. All right, this is consistent from Genesis to Revelation. All right, Genesis 3, verse 16 the Lord says to the serpent, I shall put enmity between thee and the woman, and between thy seed and her seed. It shall bruise thy head, and thou shalt bruise his heel. That's the end of the world. That's at the last trump. In a moment, in the twinkling of an eye, at the last trump, for the trumpet shall sound, and the dead shall be raised, incorruptible, and we shall be changed. And Jesus will stomp his foot on all the unsaved, and fire will come down from God out of heaven and devour all the unsaved. And then shall be brought to pass the saying that is written, Death is swallowed up in victory. O death, where is thy sting? O grave, where is thy victory? No more death after the end of the world. At the end of the world is the judgment of God. It's when we are separated. And we read this all throughout the Bible. Over and over and over and over. We can go to Matthew 13. The parable of the wheat and the tares. Where the wheat is separated from the tares. And, um, and then um, the tares are burned. Same thing. The tares are the unsaved, just like what we read in Revelation 20. And fire came down from heaven. Or, I'm sorry, fire came down from God out of heaven and devoured them. Same thing. It's the same thing. And we read this over and over and over again. So this, when this happens, this is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. It is the end of the world. So I want to point something out to you that I think gets ignored by this guy and so many other people and uh, you cannot reconcile this with what these guys are teaching second peter chapter three all right you know that the world was destroyed by water but now the world is reserved for fire it was destroyed by water now it is being reserved to be destroyed by fire. Reserved unto fire against the day of judgment and perdition of ungodly men. All right. The day of the Lord is when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven. But the day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. Right. You think, consider this, compare these verses, and then he'll come at an hour that you know not. All right, where's this at here? But the that day and hour knoweth no man. Watch therefore, for ye know not what hour your Lord does come. All right, uh, over and over and over again. So compare that with Second Peter three. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night. You'll not know what hour he'll come as a thief in the night, in which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise. All right, this is consistent with, uh, for example, Matthew 24. Or we can, go to, we can go to Mark 13. All right, it's the same thing. It's the same thing. Same thing. All right. The sun shall be darkened, and the moon shall not give her light, and the stars shall fall from heaven. For the powers of the heavens 
shall be shaken. Okay, it's the same thing. In the which the heavens shall pass away with a great noise, and the elements shall melt with fervent heat, and the earth also, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. So when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, it is the end of the world. It's consistent all throughout the Bible. This idea that Jesus comes and it's not the end of the world is not supported anywhere at all. This idea of a thousand year period after Jesus comes is not supported anywhere at all. Not in Revelation 20, not anywhere at all. Consider this, when Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, he's not going to stand on earth and walk, standing next to people having sex and creating babies. No, that's not possible. The day of the Lord will come as a thief in the night in which the heavens and the earth shall pass away with the, and the works that are therein shall be burned up. Seeing then that all these things shall be dissolved, all these things shall be dissolved. When Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, this is not a possible scenario where Jesus is on earth and people are still unsaved. Not possible. Not possible for Jesus to come, stand on earth, and then, you know, people having, making babies. It's, that's not a possible scenario. Not possible. Okay. Alright, so, I mean, I don't know how people don't see it. I, I really don't. It's incredible. It's incredible. Now, I, I, I can only conclude that these people here desire to be 20 years old, peak physical sexual form, and then given a world of, you know, virgins and, and young women and reigning and ruling over the, these young women. And having sex for a thousand years. I mean, that's, is that what you're putting your hope into? If not, why are you teaching this stuff? What's the point? You're teaching Jesus comes in the clouds of heaven, comes down on earth, and people are still making babies. That's wrong. That's very wrong. 